We've just returned from break, and we're continuing our discussion on the budget with Ms. Kelly Klutz leading us. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item that we'll discuss is an increase of social workers, and that's for 10 positions. And I'm oh, sorry. So, school, see what that break did to me? School psychologist. Thank you. And, and we have staff here to help us explain that request. Ask them to come on up. Thank you. I'm coming today not from the EC perspective. A lot of times we say, okay, well, there's that special ed director. Um, but a bigger umbrella that I now, my position encompasses are intervention services for all students across the district. And special ed has been very fortunate to have increased our psychologists from five to 14 this year. And that's just through our internal allotments in the special ed department. But the role of the school psychologist is much more broad. In special ed, you're talking about 12% of our school population. Um, and the school psychologist's role, especially when either blend, blended funding with general ed and special ed or through uh, general ed funding, they can really speak to a larger role for all students in the district. And I'm going to have um, Amy Louder just discuss some of that role. Hi, good evening everyone. Um, basically, school psychologists are, uh, as Barb had said, we were five positions last year. We've luckily been able to go up to 14 this year. Um, the national recommended ratio is, um, for Cabarrus County, of a size of 31,000 for next year. We would be 44 to 62 psychologists that would be needed. With 14, um, I thought Asking for 10 for next year would be a good start as trying to meet some of those um, recommendations. We still are way off. We would need 50 more psychologists to be up to par with what the national recommendation is. School psychologists function in very broad roles. We have um, direct support to students, parents, families, teachers, um, administrators. School psychologists sit on different problem solving teams. Um, they make collaborative decision making. Um, they're involved in consultation, helping teachers understand students and their learning styles, and counseling with students, supporting families with questions about how, if they've got students with disabilities, what are some positive ways they can work with them, um, supporting with community agencies, helping with mental health. That has really been a big drive for me is with mental health concerns. We have approximately one in every five students, the national research um, shows, there are students with mental health needs. And I don't know that we're able to accommodate all those needs with just the 14 psychologists we have on staff. May can answer this. Uh, do you assist with the IEPs? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And can you tell me roughly, and I know this is just right off the top, how many of our students of the, the, the 31,000, 30, Students have IEPs. Headcount from April 1st. Right, good. Okay. Um, Headcount from December 1st was 3,535 students. So you're really helping uh, uh, six and 7,000 parents. You're really helping that many Absolutely. families um, manage the conditions, I'm trying to pick the right words but and be sensitive, but you're really helping that many families in the county with their needs. Yes, currently, yes. That's with the EC <clears throat> funding. The request is to be funded through general education so we don't have stipulations so we can only target students with disabilities. Um, our current evaluation instrument, our practice model, actually states in there that we are able to serve all students, gen ed, um, special ed, all students. So we would be able to access 31,000 students and have an impact on all the families, not just isolated to EC. I think that would enhance your argument for your need to talk about how you augment the efforts of families to deal with conditions of which I am quite familiar. So let me understand, you said that, are you saying that the current psychologists are only able to access EC students. So if if there was a need 
perhaps for some type of assist if a principal is having a problem with with a parent and knowing that there's probably some really interesting home issues going on and they were not that child didn't have an IEP or wasn't considered an EC child then really the principal couldn't ask you to assist because that psychologist is being paid out of the EC dollars. We are able to work with students at the different tiers. And I don't know if you're familiar with the multi-tiered system of support, MTSS. As the students move throughout the tiers, tier three is that top level of service um, with the most intensive supports to students. We've been allowed to work with students at that tiered level because we can justify that there are intensive needs and they could be suspicious of a disability. So they may be coming over to EC. Pretty much below tier three, we wouldn't be able to access those children. Okay. Wow. So how the currently, how are the 14 school psychologists allocated and uh, how would you allocate the 10 additional ones? Okay. Um, we have one psychologist who serves just the preschool. So at the Mary Frances Wall Center, um, she's housed there, and then she serves all the preschools in the district. So if there are spe specific needs, um, she goes out to the preschools and does the evaluations and works with those families. Um, we also have, on average, our, other, our 13 psychologists serve about three schools each. So they're, they're split between elementary, middle, and high school by three. Um, with the additional 10 positions, we would hope to be able to change that ratio where every psychologist would have two schools each. And that could then relieve them of some of their other, uh, we, we pretty much get caught up in assessment and evaluation of students with disabilities when we're tied into this funding with this model. So if we're able to expand that, we'd be able to work um, with those two different schools and then be able to branch out and provide more services to students and families. In a perfect world, um, 31,000 students all have um, psychiatric services from their families resources and plus a coach plus a mentor at church and plus any other type, type of thing but in the real world that you deal with in the real 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 world you deal with you're the only psychological services outlet for some for many of portion students. of your students maybe I don't mean to ask you anecdotally but would you say you're the only psychological services provider for half of your students half of the students you, a third a fifth I mean, I mean what's it what's that, that there is no other resource that those families can go to and that they rely on you for well nigh 100 percent of the psychological services their child receives i'll be hesitant to say a percentage without actually looking uh, ball, ballpark it ballpark it whatever's fair we're looking at, uh, we have two day treatment programs where we work with, I'm going to say the thing wrong, Cardinal Innovations, um, our health, our mental health provider. And we team with them uh, to work with, I think in the district right now, we're talking a total of 10 students. Uh, they get intensive mental health services while they're also getting an education. Um, and But that's 10 students that get that kind of intensive help. Can you... We also have some school-based mental health services where outside providers come into the schools and provide services to students. They may or may not be psychologists, they may be counselors, but they're licensed therapists. The services provided by these 10 would be, not be limited to Tier 3. Correct. Right? Tier 1, Tier 2, all, all are eligible. Correct. And if we were able to blend the funding, then all psychologists, all 24, would be able to have access to all students. What does that look like, blending the funding? Let you speak to that. The exceptional children's department could pay for part of the salary of each of the psychologist's salary, and this money that we're requesting could offset the other part of the salary. So if they are funded by both general ed and special ed, they have access to the entire population of students. Okay. So that's just paying for Ms. Klutz to do. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, as, as well as servicing the students, are they able to, these school psychologists, are they able to actually deal with the family in relation to the student? Is that, is that part of the extended portion of their 
of their scope? Yes, we actually, um, apart from consultation where we could talk with them either over the phone or in person, we also provide related services support so we could eventually um, work with the family, especially if it's a student that has an IEP. It can be written into an IEP to be able to get psychological services. That could be for the student, that could also be for family, training for parents on how to mm -hmm. educate their children at home um, with they've got special disabilities. Um, behavioral supports, helping parents understand behavioral contracts and mirroring some of the things at school and helping them understand how to apply that at home. Um, so there would be several different options that could open up. Any other comments, board members? Have your services prevented suicides? Have your services prevented overdoses? Have your services prevented assaults within the family have your services that you know of that you you here in your career here that you know of what have your services kept from happening I would have again to, anecdotally I know I would have to say because of the model and the way we've been funded we've truly been in an assessment and evaluation model um, for several years so we've not been able to do the kinds of therapy or the interventions yep, that you're, I think, maybe alluding to. Um, however, we do have current research from the National Association of School Psychologists that do, it shows the support of academic interventions, help students with their outcomes, higher EEOG scores. Um, we have lower discipline referrals. We have decreased suicide attempts. Um, so those things are in place. It's just they haven't been here because we haven't been in that model. Donna, do you want to share? Well, my comments, I don't mean to mean that we're in competition with school psychologists. I think we need to collaboratively put something together here that I think might be missing in the discussion. When it comes to mental health needs of the students in this Cabarrus County, you have several disciplines that are working. You've got your school psychologist, even though what Amy's talking about, they've been more on the assessment end and they haven't been able to intervene in a lot of situations that you would like to do. You've got your school social workers who are the ones who are interfacing parents back to the school and dealing with lots of behavioral and psychiatric issues. You've got your school psych I mean your school counselors, that's their charge. I mean weekly I won't use the word weekly, but very often you're dealing with suicidal ideation, a lot of other issues that kids are doing. But in all the professions I've just talked about, all are bound by confidentiality. So you promise that to your student unless they're hurting themselves or going to hurt other people. So I wouldn't want to infer from this conversation because school psychologists have been unable to be outside the assessment mode that these issues have been unmet. These issues are being addressed, but we're talking about they could be addressed in a much more consistent and ongoing manner by the combination of all the disciplines together. But each one of those specialties, and thank you for the invitation to speak to that, has a, a, a relevance to helping mental health issues. And we are facing growing times, and this will be something you'll continue to hear from all of us more and more as we work from day treatment models to whatever it might be so that we can meet students where they are. And frankly, our folks are really impacting lots of lives. We have saved many, many situations by being able to have conversations together. together. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next request is an increase in uh, theater art supplements for our high schools and that came from our fine arts and that's, this is, um, it's not a, a significant amount of money, it's a small amount of money and what this does is it allows us to put our supplement schedule on a similar schedule as um, some of our other um, supplement schedules where it recognizes um, years of experience in that um, in that uh, supplement schedule so right now there's there's no differentiation between the years of experience and we would like to move that the request is to move that in so that it recognizes the different levels of experience and to do that it would cost us this amount of money okay 
The next request is to increase uh, student services clerical support for magnet, um, magnet and student transfers. Um, that request would cost $7,200. Um, and Donna is here again. Uh, if you have questions or, or um, comments about the, uh, the request for student services. Um, the next one is uh, scanning for student alumni records. Um, that's an accountability request. That is uh, that cost associated with that is one hundred fifty-three thousand dollars. And basically, in a nutshell, what that does is it takes all of our student records out of all of our schools and all of our hidey places where we have all the file cabinets, um, and we would scan those records in an electronic place and store them um, so that we could get rid of all of those old archive paper documents and so to do that it would cost this one hundred and fifty three thousand dollars to do that in doing that this was a one-time expense this, this is what's left this is and then we would not have to store any more paper documents that's right so we would free up space would we free up free up space that we could use for classrooms I don't know if we would I mean, free up space for classrooms but we would certainly free up space um, and storage costs and we I don't we're not paying for storage okay, right so now but we certainly have our staff going down in in basements or um, back rooms retrieving files and those kinds of things um, so this would make the electronic retrieval of documents also much more efficient which then would reduce the amount time. of time there's some opportunity costs that we would avoid uh, this because we would be able to more efficiently pull our documents. It would bring us out of the dark ages again. Okay. I think somebody mentioned us being in the dark ages. Is this a flat rate or is this a per per file or something? Rate? This is a um, a bargain that Matthew um, negotiate negotiated with uh, this company. Um, so I'll take you to page fifty four. Um, and he has worked with the company over multiple years, and um, and maybe this is something that we'll need to get back with you on um, April the 6th too, when Matthew is present. But um, I know that uh, there were multiple layers of of costs that he uh, presented to the budget committee and different options. Uh, we could do it over periods of time, or we could do it um, in this year, or um, it, there's also a component where we charge students to get um, their records and we charge alumni to get their records and those fees go back and we pay to scan these other f records and so the money we make goes to do this but this would take like a 10 years to work ourselves out of this hole and get this all done if we use just use those fees to do that but if, because we are not, we haven't been putting any money into it. The system hasn't. Um, so he needs, you know, we need the system to put money into this so that it wouldn't take us 10 years or more to get these records archived. What happens? All right, it's backed up. But what happens if the company goes broke? Or what happens? I mean, we get rid of the hard copies and we put it to this company. But what if something happens to that company? Do we have backup backup copies or what happens? I'm sure companies do go belly up. It, it, that would be in our contractual obligation, or that would be their contractual obligation to us. But I expect we would have, you know, a, a backup hard drive or. Because we've got to keep these the records contract. forever and ever. There would be something in the contract to protect us. Okay. I was just curious because, I mean, people that thought people would be around forever, sometimes they're not. <laughs> right. Would, would we be allowed to throw away the paper copy at that point? Why don't I get Matthew to answer that question? Um, unless Sarah can. Um, I believe we would have to check with State Archives 
and confirm with them whether or not we can actually destroy the original paper copy. Um, ultimately, there are archive rules from the state that govern how all this operates. That's, that's kind of what I was thinking. And the current guidance, unless you get specific permission for projects, the current guidance was last updated, I believe, in 1999. Um, and so the technology doesn't fully keep up with where we are today in terms of servers and accessibility to PDFs and sort of the widespread adoption of that format. So there are so there are questions to be resolved that would need to get worked out um, before you could actually kind of press go on a project like this. Yes. So in the um, description, it talks about uh, by scanning all the records in the upcoming school year, the Caparis County School Board will save taxpayers six hundred and twenty thousand dollars. And sorry, what is the basis of that calculation? Honestly, I can't remember. That's let me let me get Matthew to to talk with you guys on April the sixth when he's back. <laughs> So we'll, we'll bring Matthew in on that one. So the next request is to increase CNI instructional spe specialists. That's one position. Um, and the justification form is on 56. And he wants to ta add one curriculum coach. Um, and he currently has four, and he wants to go to five. I know originally um, he wanted more than that, and then so, and then we um, decided that we'd try to add one each year um, for the coach. And so you can see the the justification on page 56. If you'd have put someone's picture on here beside the, the coach <laughs> K, we might. Well, you do might something. you might just approve it and go. <laughs> So, and the last item um, is a request from my department to add a clerical position for the construction processing. Um, I'm requesting a part-time position, 25 hours. The reason it's 25 hours is to avoid the benefit cost associated with it, and the health insurance, the retirement expense, to keep the costs minimal. Um, and this position um, is really an accounts payable position uh, processing a lot of paper um, we're adding um, you know Odell right now we're looking at Mount Pleasant we're looking at Royal Oaks and then that's not even to mention um, what we're looking at in our growth um, in the very near future so um, we process um, the invoices for every piece of furniture for every um, piece of cafeteria equipment for every uh, piece of anything that goes into that skull, and so it's um, it's a lot. So that's the the request from my department. So we, yes, sir. Yes. Mr. Chair, uh, can I respectfully um, make a motion that we move what is currently number ten, assistant principals, and move that to position three. And number 11, which is currently um, school psychologists, move that to position number four. Move assistant principals from position number 10 to number three. And move school psychologists from number 11 to number four. Well, I thought we were going to wait for Kelly to break the uh, principles into uh, yeah. at risk and and growth because I, I would I would support I would support moving the at risk up to a higher priority. Yeah, I, I definitely am. And that in conjunction with the psychologists is the reason I was associating them to, associating them together. But well, do you would you rather to withdraw it and wait? next week while we when we have the graduation and then do that or would you prefer to do if, that if it would be addressed next week 
Uh, yes. We can do that then. Do that then. So I'll, I'll the school psychologists and the at risk portion of the print, the assistant principals plainly need to to be raised up as greater concerns. Okay, so I'm going to break out the teacher allotments into elementary, middle, and high. Then I'm going to break out the assistant principals into risk and then the others. And then I'll bring that back and let you change your priority on the six. Is that good? In yes. Including school psychologists. You, you don't want me to break out anything. You're just going to change the, the priority. The psychologists are still the lump of ten. Yes. Okay. So it's just yes. those two breakouts that we need. Two breakouts, and then you can change your priority on the six. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, thank you. It, is there any way, I, I'm worried about your uh, clerical position for the construction work uh, being all the way down at the bottom. Is there any way that we can fund that out of the construction project budget to just say that's, that's another, you know, just along with furniture and everything else, we got um, clerical position um, I'm not a fan of putting it in um, like a bond or a cops because that's not something we want to um, you know we want to right no it wouldn't be something that would be financed but I know there's some things in the new construction budget which we say are cash yes. paid with cash so there is an area in our continuation that we request, you know, the the principal early, the principal coming in early, the clerical coming in early. So that is an area that we can put that in, um, and so that's what we that's an area that we'll talk about on the six too. So certainly we can just move that over into that area. Uh, and, I, I think that would be more appropriate. I'm just worried that it's going to get lost among all these other priorities about putting. Um, resources into you know, helping children and you know based on that yeah it should be down at the bottom but the reality is that we also have to make sure that we're spending the money on those schools uh, wisely and we don't want the project to be slowed because your the paperwork's not keeping up thank you I'm worried about it too but even on the even on the six it's still the operations request right I'm sorry on it's, the still six. Gonna, it's still gonna be an operations request it's not a ca related to the capital it, it is operations, but it's continuation. So the continuation comes before any expansion. So okay. it would come before any of this. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's move on to our last items. And so these are our maintenance. Um, operational expansions. There's two areas. There's facilities, and then there's grounds. Um, and so we've these are you know Chuck's uh, request. We went through the process. We vetted those, and then they were prioritized. Um, Chuck, you know, agrees with how the budget committee um, prioritized them, and this um, is how. And, and these aren't competing against other areas. These are all confined within the facilities budget. So these are a little bit different in that they're a little easier, um, that they're just, they're not competing against each other. So the first request um, was to increase health and safety, the, the budget area component for health and safety items. And that was to increase $50,000. And we saw that as the highest priority in um, in this budget request, the next one was to increase the camera maintenance. That's for forty-five thousand. And then third, he needs a data analyst position, um, and he calls that a CMMS technician, and that helps him gather all of his data and, and know where his needs are. Then there's um, he needs to increase his staff development budget by fifty thousand dollars. And then the next line item would be the service trucks. He needs to replace 10 of those for $370,000. And we know we've looked at those, um, the vehicle mileage on those, and we know that they're in excess of what they should be. Equipment, um, he has a request for $250,000 while equipment is a one-time expense. He has a long list of equipment, so he would like to have a reoccurring equipment budget so that he can get his equipment where 
it needs to be. Then but is this the same service truck we talked about earlier? Um, no, that was transportation. This is uh, facilities. Okay, excuse yeah, me. Thank different you. Ones. That's fine. Um, this VFA subscription is is in relation to the product that you receive from Fanning Howie, and it allows him to work with that data. Um, carpenter, uh, a carpenter, a lock, a locksmith is what he is asking for, and that's a forty-five thousand dollar position. So. His request is uh, for an additional $880,000 in addition to what he is currently funded in that order. Are there questions about any of those? The first $50,000 you talked about for safety. Yes, health and safety. Those health and safety. Yes. For what? Six for what? What is the actual expense going on there? So what, are I can you say, familiar I can, with Ward Smith? Ward Smith handles um, our health and safety and asbestos and those kinds of things. He, um, that's the budget that he manages and when there's a safety or health or asbestos issue then he takes care of those and that's the budget that he um, uses to take care of those. I think the justification page should go into more detail as to what those that? needs are if I read it. I hope I didn't. Sorry if I did read it incorrectly, but it does not it explain does not. what that need is. Um, it just okay. says we need fifty thousand. If it's if it's specifically for asbestos types of abatement issues, then it needs to say so. I would think. Gotcha. Thank we you. will take care of it. Others. Okay. So now we're going to move to our grounds um, budget request. And um, if you remember last year, we talked a lot about our ponds, and we're going to talk a lot about our ponds this year too. So his first request is a lead technician, soil and water conservation, uh, for $55,000. The next one is a technician um, for soil and water conservation. He original the original requests were three soil and water technicians, um, and they were all high priority. But the budget committee we kind of we broke them out a little bit separately, so that's why they're all listed separately like this. Um, the third request is our sports maintenance field, so it's the maintenance of our sports fields in the middle schools. And then the fourth request would be the, the maintenance of our sports fields in the elementary schools. And then um, five would be additional service trucks. And then finally, that, um, that one uh, soil and water conservation technician. So total request is $323,000 for grounds. And again, they're not... They're not competing against anything but, but grounds. Why don't we outsource this stuff? Why don't we outsource it? Mm -hmm. um, is, is I think the middle school um, is for a contracted um, position. I think. No, I was talking about the soil and water conservation, the ponds, the experts on the ponds, and, and that type of thing. Based on Chuck's explanation to the budget committee, these soil and water technicians, the lead and the th and the single, would be doing the maintenance, and the and would be qualified to take care of all of our detention and retention ponds, which we're being required. Right now, he says that many of our ponds are out of compliance, and uh, right now the cities are forgiving us, but there won't be long before we'll be paying fines, and so. He, these people would have full-time jobs and would be out he told me, what did he say 44 ponds something of that nature plus we it's also have here. to maintain the ponds these will be taking care of the ponds is not only in Cabarrus County but also in Kannapolis City Schools City. so they're they're there to recondition them and get them back to where they're supposed to be because of the uh, but this the is Diener a, laws and all yeah, this is an ongoing expense though I mean last year's budget we had hundred fifty thousand dollars to repair the ponds no, it did, is an ongoing expense but we didn't right? get that money last year we had to take that out of our own money 
Go ahead. I'm sorry, what did you say? Last year's request is a one-time request. This is a, an ongoing request. That's what. I don't recall last year's being a one-time request. Was that it? Was it said 26 stormwater management pond <coughs> maintenance, $150,000. Yeah, that was for just to do some repairs. Just they spent some... that money to repair the ponds, but then... he said you have to do ongoing maintenance. Right. You've got silt that's got <coughs> into them. You have to dig them out. He's going to need an excavator. I think there's a request in there. Mm -hmm. We saw in the yeah. capital request for an excavator to man manage these ponds. And he said that it would be much cheaper to do it in-house than to pay someone to come in and do this type of work because you would pay for the margin on the contractor and all the other associated fees associated with outsourcing it to someone else. Mm -hmm. So I guess he I'll, feels I'll, confident. Yeah, that I'd like to talk that. to Chuck offline, I guess. Yes. Okay. okay. We'll, get, we'll get Chuck with you. Okay. Other questions? I've worn you down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's it, right? Okay. Well, that's all I have for you today. <laughs> Fine job that's you did. Since I've worn you down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be back on April the 6th. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Klutz. Um, I hope your legs are not too exhausted from standing up. Um, all right, board members, I need a uh, motion. We need to convene in the closed session. According to General Statute 143-318.11a-3, consult with an attorney. Uh, General Statute 143-318.11a-6 to consider qualifications, competence, performance, etc. And so, if I can, I need a motion. So move. Second. <clears throat> Mr. Harrison, Mr. Furr, all in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is moving into closed session.